Roll call. Thank you, Chairperson Granado. Good evening, everyone. Mr. Cassio? Present. Mrs. Evans? Here. Mrs. Fitzpatrick? Here. Mr. Healy? Ms. McCurdy? Here. Mr. Morris? Here. Mrs. Paradise? Present. Vice Chairperson Mr. Hill? Mm -hmm. Chairperson Mrs. Granado? Present. And Weathersfield High School student representative Ms. Eden Fritz Aguirre? Here. All present. Okay, thank you. All right, the board invites Mr. Sitaro's fifth grade class from the Charles Wright School to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. So come on up. Okay, thank you very much, and I'm excited to have you back up here pretty soon. All right, I am making a motion to delete an agenda item to this evening's agenda under reports and discussion items, and it is that A, Teachers College Project School presentation. Can I have a second for that? Second. All right, any discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Any abstentions? And that motion passes. Okay, so we'll move on. Mr. Emmett, we have that staff recognition tonight. We do. This is a great example of Goal 1 Student Achievement Action 1, where it's a really authentic learning experience. And I had the opportunity uh, to visit Charles Wright last week, and I saw Mr. Sitaro, and he said, Mr. Emmett, do you have a minute? I want to share something with you. And I just thought it was absolutely fascinating. So Mr. Sitaro and students, come on up. Tell us uh, what's going on. You want to go to the podium? Yeah. Thanks. Guys ready? Yep. Thank you for this opportunity. My class and I recently read and discussed a scholastic article, a scholastic news article entitled Prisoners at Home. My students learned about the Japanese internment camps that were used during World War II shortly after the Pearl Harbor attack. The article led to some great classroom discussions, and when I posed the idea that we write to Mr. Tyra, I was pleased with the enthusiastic response I got from my students. Here to tell you about that article and the project we took on are some of the students from my classroom. In the article, we were introduced to Tim Tyra. He was only nine years old when his family was forced to leave their home, pet dog romper, and most of their belongings in order to move to a prisoner camp. They were American citizens who had done nothing wrong, yet because of the fear that, it, that existed, Tim's family, along with others, other Japanese American families, were forced to relocate. What really amazed us most was all, wait, sorry. What really amazed us most of all was when we learned that Tim and his family remained patriotic even though they were held for nearly three years behind barbed wire. Tim even went on to join the U.S. military when he became an adult. Our class thought that was an extraordinary story when Mr. Sitaro asked if we would like to send Mr. Tyra some letters and we eagerly said yes. Mr. Sotaro had to check on some things before we got started. First, he found, he found Mr. Tyra, Mr. Tyra's address and phone number online. Then after, then, after Mr. Horder gave his approval, our class called Mr. Tyra's home phone in California. His wife answered and said he wasn't home, but she said it would be fine if we sent him some letters. Our morning work assignment over the next two days was to draft our letters 
to Mr. Taiva. We had some criteria we had to follow. That included thanking him for sharing his story with us and for serving our country in the military. We also each asked him some questions we were wondering about. Mr. Sotaro took our letters and placed them in a large envelope with a cover letter on top, which included a return envelope and some postage just in case he was able to respond to our questions. In about one week, we received, we received a response letter from Mr. Taiba. We were excited when Mr. Sotaro showed us the envelope. We read the reply letter, and during this morning meeting, and Mr. Horder happened to be present in our room to hear himself. The letter talked about how he was moved by our letters and was planning to reply to our questions in time. Here's a copy of that letter for you to keep. Because we have a large class and Mr. Tyra is 85 years old, we expected it to take a, quite a while before we heard from him again. You might imagine our shock when later that same day we received a large package from California. Mr. Sotaro was equally excited even though he didn't love the loud racket we were making in the classroom. <laughs> Mr. Sotaro kept us, in, kept us in suspense and we waited nearly till the end of the day to open the package from Mr. Tyra. Oh. The package was absolutely amazing. It contained many padded envelopes inside. They were, mar they were marked on the outside with their um, contents. They read, my response letter to your class, gifts for students, photos, gifts for the classroom, and gifts for Mr. Sotaro. It was like Christmas morning. Mr. Sotaro read the 11-page response letter to the class out loud to us. Here is a copy of that letter for you to keep. The letter was incredible and the class was super quiet as our teacher read Mr. Tyra's words. We could tell he was writing from his hurt, heart and, recall, <laughs> and recalling powerful memories as he answered our questions and shared his experiences with us. Some of us, some of us even had water in our, our, in our eyes. The photographs shared with us were on online images of real Japanese Americans before, during and after the internment camps. Mr. Tyra had taken the time to attach information that went along with each photograph. There are so many photos, we haven't yet gone through them all. What was extra cool was that Mr. Tyra put things in chronological order for us. We were just learning about that in our workshop lessons. The gifts for students include Pokemon cards. Gifts for the classroom included baseball cards from famous Japanese players as well as four cartoon animation cells. Mr. Sotaro plans to display these pieces in our classroom once he can find some room. Gifts for Mr. Sotaro include comics about the World War II era, two Disney books, and some old buttons. We were absolutely amazed by all the treasure Mr. Tyra had sent us, and even through the gifts were tremendous. It was his letter that touched us most deeply. Mr. Sotaro had the opportunity to share our pro project with Mr. Emmett, who happened to be in our school on that same day. He was impressed and congratulated us on a job well done. Mr. Sotaro had called Mr. Tyra after school the next day and thanked him for his generosity. He told Mr. Tyra about the rich learning he had provided for his students and thanked him for his generous gifts, which brought joy to all of us.
Mr. Tyler thanked us in return for taking interest in the time period and told us that he was happy to help if we had any other questions. We are now in the process of writing thank you notes for Mr. Tyra, and Mr. Sotaro had ordered him a Charles Wright t-shirt with Tyra 85 written on the back. We will send him our package soon. I'm so glad with the way everything turned out. I believe this seemingly small act of writing a letter of gratitude and interest has shown the students the power of their words. Some students have since expressed an interest in writing to other people and I couldn't be happier. We thank our principal, superintendent, and the Board of Education for this opportunity to share our learning. Wow. Well, thank you. Anyone with comments? Anybody have? Elaine? Uh, I just think, um, Mr. Sotaro, this was a perfect um, example of meaningful writing for the kids and you did an outstanding job as all of our staff does but this was a wonderful opportunity and and I can relate because I, I had a World War II father so I really know a little bit about this and, and boys and girls your presentations and your reading with emphasis was so beautiful it was like you could be public speakers already You're at, what are they 10? 11, something like that. I mean, they, they, the enunciation, we could understand everything you said. Nobody was quick, quick, excellent job. Just an excellent job by your teacher and all you students. I'm so proud of you. Thank you very much. Great. Anyone else? I don't think we can improve on that. I know. <laughs> I, I will say, you know, one of the reasons we learn history is so we won't repeat it. Um, that doesn't seem to be happening the way at all, because as Mark Twain said, it certainly does rhyme. <laughs> but um, I do want to recommend a book for all of you. It's Alan Say. I know it's in the Media Center at Charles Wright. And it's called Grandfather, and it sounds very much like this gentleman that you met. So it's a, um, it was a second grade book. It's a picture book more, but it's a beautifully done book. Um, and it's a great story about the internment camps. So. Thank you so much. That was awesome. Thank, Thank you. Well done. Now we have to go on to other things, huh? Yeah. <laughs> we do. Okay. <laughs> and uh, we'll spend time reading that letter. That's oh, great. Absolutely. I know. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, let's continue on with our agenda, and we're going to do the approval of the minutes for our regular Board of Ed meeting on October 23rd, 2018. Are there any corrections? We're okay with it. May I have a motion to approve these minutes? So, so moved. moved. Second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Good. Those minutes are approved. Also, tonight we're going to approve the minutes for our special Board of Ed meeting on November 7th, 2018. Are there any corrections? No. Okay. May I have a motion to approve the minutes? Second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Those minutes are approved. Is there anyone wishing to make a public comment? Come on up to the podium and state your name and address. And may I remind you that we have a five-minute limit. Okay, Mr. Emmett, we have communications from you tonight. Yes, thank you, Mrs. Granado. Good evening, everyone. I have uh, several items this evening. Uh, as you know, the district is working this month on an effort to support the Wethersfield Food Bank and to ensure that our fellow community members do not face hunger. On November 3rd, our partners from Autumn Transportation sponsored a stuff a bus at Stop and Shop in Wethersfield. This effort was a tremendous success. Autumn Transportation Manager Cheryl Kahlberg reported that an estimate uh, estimated $3,200 in food and monetary donations was raised at this event. And as the month has progressed, each school has worked on the collection of non-perishable food items for the food bank. This Friday, Autumn will be visiting schools with a bus and the Stillman Building as well, and will be picking up all of the food for delivery to the Weathersfield Food Bank. So, okay. great effort. The fall production will take place this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at Weathersfield High School. This fall's production will be the Laramie Project. Performances will take place November 16th and 17th at 7.30 and on Sunday, November 18th at 3.30 p.m. The boys' soccer team will take on Daniel Hand tomorrow in the Class L State Semifinals. This match will take place at Naugatuck High School. 
I believe our girls' swim team is swimming this evening down at uh, Southern uh, Connecticut State University. Our football team has its annual matchup against Newington on November 21st at Newington at 6 o'clock. Uh, it is certainly hard to believe that the fall season is winding down, <laughs> but I offer congratulations to all of our fall athletes on a very successful fall campaign. It's uh, also truly hard to believe, but yes, you heard it correctly. There is snow in the forecast for Thursday <laughs> evening. Uh, this is a good time to remind everyone that any decisions to delay, close, or dismiss early will be communicated through a variety of avenues. We'll utilize television, radio media, we'll utilize social media, and I will inform parents via uh, school messenger. Phone call and no robocall, my voice, email, and text. As I'm sure you're all well aware, the decision-making process is not easy, nor is it taken lightly. It's a tough decision to make, uh, but my number one priority is always the safety of students and staff. Uh, on the shared services front, we conducted interviews today for the custodial maintenance supervisor. Um, we currently have three candidates that will be coming back in uh, next week, actually next Tuesday, for a second round of interviews. Uh, you may have seen some activity on the railroad tracks in Wethersfield over the past couple of weeks. Um, the railroad owner is planning on utilizing this line again in the future. Uh, this is of obvious interest to us as a district uh, because our students cross the tracks via bus, walking, and bicycle. Uh, there will be a meeting coming up in early December to discuss needs around the crossings and hopefully gain a clear timeline as to when any train traffic may resume. So I'll have more information for you on that. Uh, tomorrow we will be meeting with Colliers and Milone and McBroom to follow up on the Phase 1 presentation and also discuss the components of Phase 2. Uh, we'll have additional information for you in this Friday's update. The Business Advisory Committee is going full steam ahead on a variety of projects designed to expose students to careers. Most recently, the high school held a lunch and learn with uh, broadcaster Joe D'Ambrosio. Uh, the Travelers hosted six of our students for an actuarial day up at the Travelers. Um, I expect to have them here at the next board meeting to talk about that experience. We're also looking at potential grant opportunities with IBM, uh, and I will be meeting with representatives from Goodwin College this Friday to discuss partnership opportunities as well. Uh, tomorrow, I'll be meeting with Mrs. Granado and Mr. Cassio regarding the progress on the strategic plan. We'll have information to share with you regarding progress and priorities at the next Board of Ed meeting. And congratulations to all of the superintendent's award winners. Uh, it was an honor to recognize many deserving uh, students, parents, and staff members. Each of these individuals personifies <coughs> strong leadership, integrity, and a true commitment to making our district a great place in which to learn and work. And finally this evening, I'd like to remind everyone that next week uh, features a minimum school day on Wednesday. The district will be closed on November 22nd and November 23rd in observance of Thanksgiving. So a happy Thanksgiving to everyone in advance. Wow, that happened fast. Thank Hard you. I know. Any questions for Michael, Elaine? Uh, Mike, I've just recently been to the advisory um, committee meetings. And um, how did that go with the Joe D'Ambrosio? Was that held at the high school? I don't know if even. It was. It was. was. Yes, it was. Cafeteria, lunch and learn kind of thing? It was actually held in Mr. Danaher's room, oh, okay. uh, which is adjacent to the guidance suite. We had approximately 30 students oh, okay. uh, that attended. Uh, again, on Friday at the football game, I talked to Mr. Martin, who serves on that uh, particular committee. He has two individuals that are interested in doing a lunch and learn. Through a uh, recent WSPC meeting, we have a parent also who is interested in doing a lunch and learn, so we're working on setting uh, her up to come in. Uh, she works for ESPN and the Human Resources Department mm -hmm. and talks about soft skills, which is something our kids obviously right. need. So we've got so a lot. Went, well, went well. The drove it very much. Certainly did. Wonderful. Thank yes. you. I just have a quick question um, <clears throat> with regarding to I help me out with the delayed. Are we doing a specific element of delaying time? So are we going to go when we have a delay? It's always going to be 90 minutes, 90 minutes, 90 minutes. OK, yep. that, I, I knew I heard that. Yep. I just wanted to make sure that was a clarification. Yep. It's not going to be 60. It will nope. always be 90. No, since I've been superintendent, we've gone with a consistent 90 minute. You know, what ended up happening was you had a 60, you had a 90, you had a two. So we've gone in the middle with the 90 minute. It, it creates always. no confusion and it gives us enough time to get roadways cleared. So that's a standard. Good, good question. Yep. All right. And then um, the lunch and learn. Uh, <clears throat> I heard a lot of the kids that went was very successful. They had a great uh, conversation. And then uh, there was conversation at the 
uh, mayor's ball meeting that uh, mobile gas station uh, owners want to come in and do a lunch and learn. Mm. The cross so, automotive? Pardon me? The old cross? Yeah. Yeah. So great. the word <coughs> mm -hmm. is getting out, and yes. you know, I think yeah, everyone is just trying to get there. Mm -hmm. yep. So picking up steam. But I heard through the grapevine that Joe Ambrosia was very good, right, Bobby? She, he oh, was... I, yes, he was excellent. <laughs> we went to <coughs> school together, so he was. Uh, <laughs> Oh, I didn't know Very that. interesting as I walked in. <laughs> <laughs> the word was out. <laughs> All right. Are we done, John? <laughs> okay. Anyone else with questions for Michael? Thank you, Michael. Okay. Thank you. Is right. Um, tonight we do have one action item as we move along. Elaine, would you please read motion 6A for us? Move that the Board of Education approve the legislative updates that were in our packet. And I don't have every name of them with me. But do you okay. want me to read each name? Of each no, packet? I think well, there, there was okay a lot with, of them. Yeah, there was yeah. a lot. Second. <laughs> That's a better way to do it, Ty. Second. <laughs> is, is there any discussion? This is, uh, we already did a first reading on this. Any discussion? Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Great, motion 6A passes. Okay, meetings held. We did have um, our WEC annual meeting, and that was on um, October 29th, and we attended at the Pitkin Center. Um, the Wethersfield Early Childhood Collaborative has its focus that all Wethersfield children, birth to eight, are healthy, developmentally successful learners and connected to the community. So they met for this annual meeting. It was led by Kim Bobbin, our family coordinator. She gave an update on the current WEC activities and projects, and then she introduced the Two Gen Initiative as the topic for the evening, and Gen is short for a generation. The Two Gen approach recognizes that whole family success will be limited if supports are only directed at one generation. Therefore, the focus is on creating opportunities for and addressing needs of both children and adults. Also, Mary Kay Jensen led the breakout session during which time the attendees discussed ideas and strategies for this two generation. Developmentally, developmental screening was discussed and professional development to show teachers how to incorporate two gen in their schools and classrooms. And last, Janine McMahon, our family specialist at Catholic Charity, spoke about her experiences with 2Gen and how she's now helping others. The next meeting for WEC is Monday, November 19th at 4.30 at the library. Also, we have our special board of ed meeting, our retreat, which was not in the Berkshires. It was in the lower level of Stillman. So Kelly, would you speak to that? forgot my glasses on my desk, so bear with me. Okay. Okay, so on Wednesday, November 7th, the Board of Education members, along with the Superintendent of Schools, Michael Emmett, Assistant Superintendent Sally Destoli, and our facilitator, Lyle Kurtman, met for a special session. The session kicked off with Lyle Kurtman providing us a presentation, including the overview of the Workplace Personality Inventory, or WPI. WPI is an assessment that can be used to evaluate and grow leadership across the school system. Prior to the meeting, the members of the board had individually completed the WPI assessments, and we went over our results and discussed as a group how we can best collaborate when we consider our own areas of strength and or weaknesses. We also reviewed the overall trends from assessments taken by our school leaders and a sampling of teachers and discussed how to use that data to better our school system. In addition, we also discussed the strategic plan, the role of feedback from several different participants in the school, in the school district, as well as uh, the updated roles of the superintendent and the assistant superintendent and how they are defined. Okay, any questions for Kelly? Thank you, you did good without your glasses, thank you. <laughs> okay, um, we have meetings scheduled. There is that WEC meeting on November 19th at 4.30 at the library. Student program and services will be November 20th at 6.30 at Stillman. And finance and information management committee will be November 27th um, before our next board meeting at 6.15. 
All right, is there any unfinished business? Okay, all right, then we'll look out again. Is there anyone wishing to make a public comment? Please come on up to the podium and state your name and address. And may I remind you that we have a five minute limit. Okay, so we'll move on to board comments. Anybody up here have a comment or comments? John? Thank you. Um, our facilities and uh, maintenance committee meeting, uh, unfortunately, was not able to uh, happen because we did not have a quorum. Um, Kelly, myself, Bobby, and the superintendent uh, were present. So we have to pick another date. Um, I don't know with our schedule if you want to do that before Thanksgiving or um, wait until the f later, you know. So we have to just maybe tomorrow when we meet, mm -hmm. we can decide a couple of dates that yeah. might work mm -hmm. for the committee. Good. Elaine? Um, I had the opportunity to visit um, three schools this week. And I have to tell you, we have a lot of positives going on in each school. I was thrilled to see in the hallways a lot of examples of our social emotional um, curriculum hanging on walls, walk, turn the corner, you see be kind, go this way, say something kind. Uh, it, it was positive everywhere I went. And, um, the children were all engaged in, in their Chromebooks, and of course, I don't know how to run one, but they, mm -hmm. they, they, did a, they were very thrilled that we all have supplied, or the whole town has supplied, because it was tax money that bought the Chromebooks. Um, um, the principals were out in the hallways. They weren't like in, the, you know, in their little um, offices. They were out pushing stuff around with the, with the teachers from room to room. Um, Everything was going just so positively. There was a great atmosphere in, in both all of Charles Wright. I went to Hamner and Highcrest, and I just in, want to encourage others to go see what's it's wonderful. And um, I had I went out feeling positive, so I just wanted to share that the schools are working hard. Thank you, Elaine. They are great places. Anyone else? <clears throat> I'm going to get to you, Eden. <clears throat> I do have some closing comments because two meetings I went to. One is the Kenan Kids Coalition, which I always speak to because this is a great example of a collaboration among different groups in town for the benefit of our kids. And Keen for Kids does the after school program, which now has 932 enrolled students in the elementary school. So that's 30% of our students stay for enrichment at the end of the day. And I thought it was very important. Every school now has movement as part of their after school activities. And other interesting activities, I love this, an improv theater. Oh. And Charles Wright and three other schools are doing musicals this spring, um, hoping to get all the elementary schools on board with that. Silas Dean Middle School, through the Keen for, on Kids, also does after school programs. Um, 153 students were signed up for intramurals and 15 for tutoring. There's also a Friday night hangout for the 6th and 7th graders. Keen continues, the Keen on Kids Coalition continues to reach out to teachers and coaches for ideas that will excite and enrich students for the after school at Solestine Middle School. And the library also works so diligently for our students. And Brooke Berry was there. She reported on the teen after school programs. There are 50 teens at the library every day from 2.30 to 5 for activities such as crafts and movies. And <clears throat> so very well deserved, Judy Keene was awarded the Polaris Award, an award that recognizes leadership in the greater Hartford area. And congratulations to Judy. It's so deserving. And as always, we say thank you to her. Also, I went to the Hunger Action Team on Friday the 9th. And it was their three-year anniversary. Um, it does seem like they've been here longer. And their um, part of the mayor's ball came out of that. Um, we're part of the Dazzling Dozen. When I say we, it's the Weathersfield Public Schools for the month of November. And Mr. Emmett spoke to that, how the schools are collecting food items and autumn transportation is stuffing the bus. So we're very excited. And also, what great lessons for our students. Silestine Middle School, led by the students, have had a gluten-free drive in October and plans for March Madness in February and Spread the Love food drive in May. That's incredible effort by those students. 
And so the group did discuss the amazing success over the last three years, the amazing success of the Mayor's Ball and the Keene Foundation's contribution. And perhaps the most important piece of this, of the hunger action being in town, is the awareness that there is hunger in the town of Wethersfield. Um, the only other piece I was going to talk about tonight was the Career Advisory Board, but you stole my thunder. Um, but we're so excited about it, and it's because we are working on exposing our students in high school and perhaps in the lower grades as we move along to career possibilities. So we have lunch and learns, we have mentoring, we have internships. Um, a great group of people are on this board. Um, Joey D'Ambrosia was very entertaining. Um, he talked about his career in broadcasting, and I do know um, everyone at one time wanted to be an ESPN broadcaster, so Joe was quite popular. Um, Travelers has um, asked if we could be with them as a partnership, and of course we said yes, um, and we're working with them. Neil Wells is setting this all up, and we're working with him. Um, the next meeting for the Career Advisory Board is on Monday, November 26 at 7 o'clock at the high school, and the public is invited. Um, a big shout out to Mark Danaher for doing this job as coordinator the first year um, for all the stuff he's doing. Thanks, Mark. Um, anyone else? Diane? Along with the Hunger Action Committee, I noticed um, this weekend that the glass, uh, glass of mirror, Weathersfield Volunteer Ambulance is going to be mm -hmm. collecting turkeys for um, Thanksgiving food drive for food share, and I believe it's this weekend. Yep. So um, people can donate turkeys. To be yep. There's a lot of them, and DeSopo's Funeral Home also has a big this food Saturday, drive. Right? DeSopo's. So it's it's um it's it's a wonderful uh, community when it comes to being generous, and so I'm very pleased. Anyone else? Okay, Eden, life at the high school. Well, I'm glad that you mentioned the Lunch and Learn because I was lucky enough to attend, and it really was an educational experience, very informative. So um, that was really exciting, and I'm glad you mes mentioned it. Stole my thunder, thank you. Great, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's been happening a lot tonight. Mr. Emmett also covered something I was going to say, so thank you. <laughs> no problem. Everything off my agenda, thanks. <laughs> so recently we had a social media awareness assembly. Um, it was given by Scott Driscoll. It was really eye-opening. A lot of students, we got back to class, they were like, I shouldn't have posted that and things like that. And so it was really great to see that they were really becoming more self-aware about what they were doing online. So that was really nice. Um, and on Monday the 5th, WHS STEM students attended Skills 21 Expo Fest kickoff in Seymour, Connecticut. They had 30 minutes to prepare a sales pitch. And Weathersfield Engineering Team won the competition, which great. is really exciting. I can never do anything like that, but that's a really exciting win, and I'm very happy about that. Mm -hmm. I've also been told to mention that the NHS Fall Induction Ceremony will be at Weathersfield High School on November 15th. That's a Thursday. It will be in the Media Center. Also very good to know. And as Mr. Emmett said, the Laramie Project will be held um, November 16th through the 18th, directed by Jeff Rhodes. Very talented cast. I got to see a rehearsal. It's an amazing show, and I'm really excited to see it on the stage. And that's all from the high school. Thank, Thank you. you, Eden. Any questions for Eden? She's doing such a good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. At this time, I make a motion to move to executive session for the purpose of possible action on appointment of the principal of Webb Elementary School. And that executive session will be followed by another on the discussion of the superintendent's goals. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so that concludes the public part of our board meeting. Thank you all for coming and for watching. Good night.